Yo, what up? It's your boy, BlackGritty.com. What's going on, guys? Jason here, IQMZ Sports. So, <laughs> we're back. It's so it's so annoying winning, man. We're winning too much. It's not even fun. We're bored with winning, right? Uh, no, I love it. It's okay. the best thing ever. It's not boring at all. It's so much fun. Oh, God. The, the Giants, games are entertaining. The Giants got whooped. Shout Whip. out to all the local Giant fans. The little Giants. Shells. <laughs> yeah, that's what Sue tweeted out. I, I love having somebody like Sue. I little attitude, right? I always liked him, even though he was grimy and dirty, because he didn't, he wasn't, a, he was not apologetic about it. Like just him. Uh, just off the track. You know who I hate that's a dirty player? Who? Chris Paul. <laughs> Chris Elbow Paul. Elbow Alvarado the other night? Yeah. And then For he, no reason? And then he wants to cry and complain about, what, but he's such a scuzzbug. But he does Zion it, don't. He does that stuff all the time. He and he's has. like the president of the NLPA. Like, I know. You, that kind of dirt ball irks me but sue stomping on nuts and kicking people in the back i'm all for it it's cool you know what i mean if you're gonna go be a ruffian go ahead be a ruffian now he's on <laughs> our team and uh i love it i like it i want some more of it so just about the game in general it was impressive it was impressive and the giants are well coached the giants are to be feared in the next two years next year they're going to be a little bit better they've had more injuries than anybody mm -hmm. Uh, when you just read off the list of people that are injured, it's almost freakishly so compared to the rest of the league. And they did start off 6-1. and one. Let's just say this, too. I know how good the Eagles are because they do what they're supposed to do. Take care of business. The record is easy, yep. which is why the whole division is above 500, which is why three of the four teams in the NFC East are going to be in the playoffs. Uh, the battle for basement on that is going to be next week. Yep, Sunday night flexed out. Yeah, so flexed in. The, Either way, the Eagles have only beaten three teams with winning records. Four teams now: the Giants, the Vikings, the Cowboys without Dak, and the Titans. Who they beat the Titans in a way that is impressive because the Titans lose a lot of games close. Right, they don't get romped, they don't get rolled, they don't get beaten in submission often. They always find a way to keep the game close if they do lose. And the Eagles rolled on them. Then so, the Jags rolled them this week, too. So who knows what's going on with the Titans right now? They look like they're turning the wrong way. Well, I think the Eagles took their soul last week. <laughs> they might have. They fired that GM. They, they fired their GM. And, and that's 100% on Brown. Brown, you know, when he said, I, I took this, I had to give you this whooping, but I still love y'all. Took you know that I mean? fine for it, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but. His whole demeanor and expression, man, like, yo, I would have stayed. I wanted to stay, but y'all did me that. dirty. He wanted to stay. So yeah. That. So, I mean, I think they're just broken now <laughs> <laughs> because the coach never wanted to let him go. Right. You saw on draft night. He was pissed. That's what certain things like I'm like when, you know, I, they can't know everything, but I'm like, your job is to study the team the whole week. Like if you didn't right. watch footage to know that uh, Vrabel did not want him to leave, Right. Like, oh, look at them having a conversation before the game. They're being friendly. No, Vrabel loved the dude. Right. He's, Vrabel didn't want him to go. He's patriot tough, like whatever you want to call it, yeah. however that nonsense is. He's out there playing, looking like he got one eye. Yeah, I don't know why his eye's all red. Um, what happened? He, something happened. He, he's been sick, and then it, something happened with his eye. He has an infection, whatever. I know he has food poisoning around yeah. Thanksgiving. But then he's still, he's still going out there playing uh, a couple of drops. Uh, we're all over the place, but let, let, let's refocus back in the game. All right. They've they haven't had a rough schedule, but you play who's in front of you. And the biggest thing is for me, even in these wins, they have mistakes and they're fixing the problems through winning. Right. Most of the time people are like, oh, you gotta lose a tough game so you know how to what to fix and what to correct. No, they're winning games. They sucked in special teams for one, two games, maybe, like where they were just a embarrassingly bad the next week they're like scud missiles out there like they're well, locked they loaded. ellis and that kid is somehow a special team star and and every, like, where's he been and everybody's feeding off of it everybody's tackling uh covey looks like he's rejuvenated boston scott i don't know well you know uh, boston scott woke up because it was giants day and he's I, like it's game time i looked into this i did research the only thing i could think of is some chick fucked him over in New York, and he takes it out <laughs> on the Giants. He never played there. He never went there. Nope. He never hung out there on the weekend. <laughs> I assumed that some chick 
did him dirty. <laughs> Whenever he gets, you think to it's because his name is Boston? Just that whole rivalry. And he just grew to hate it I, as a kid. I, I, I'm thinking <laughs> some girl did him dirty, and he's showing out every time he go. And that's always a woman. <laughs> oh, 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 man! When a woman gets your boy, you got to go out. Your, this is what you missing, girl. This is what you missing. He just every wakes time. up on Giants Day like I choose violence today. Hey, for real, for real. Goes but, up to Miles Sanders. He's like, hey. You can sit this one. Yo, Vanessa, you can't go nowhere in the city without hearing my name all week, all right? That's how he goes and approaches Giant Week. So, uh, you know, but again, they fix things in wins. And they overcome them. Yes, they overcome them during the games, but then they fix them yes. after wins. So the, the special teams is playing poorly. They fix that. Sort of. They fix pump block. They, they, no, that they, they they fixed that. Right. They fixed it. The pump block was due to your, field position. Yeah, nice. and that happens to anybody. And I mean that, that punter, like we we just before the show, he's probably not going to be an eagle anymore because right. he picked up another punter who's apparently better. But I mean, Slightly. for a punter, yeah, that oh. white boy was scooping. He got he got some flavor. I don't know what kind of that athleticism was he's Australian got going football, on. The way he scooped that ball. Oh man, he scooped it like it was like, nothing. Yeah, like uh, it looked like it was preordained, like it was magnetic to his hand. He just <laughs> threw his hand down there, and the ball was in. I'm like, damn! <laughs> I thought he was getting the first or more. Uh, he should have got the first. Should he should have got a 15 yard penalty. They broke his foot. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it, special the worst turf in the NFL. Yes, special team has been fixed. Okay, then you, you go out there and you say, all right, Dallas Goddard goes down. The passing game doesn't look right. The blocking doesn't look right. You're getting a lot of holds, a lot of penalties. The tight ends are getting most of them. Took two or three games, but what do they do? Now yeah, these Justin. tight ends are catching balls. Yep. <laughs> now these tight ends are crack black blocking, blacking. <laughs> crack blacking, blocking. <laughs> they're, they're improving in two weeks. It just took them two weeks to get into a hey. Guess what? I don't start, bro. Dallas Goddard takes every right. single snap because he's the GOAT right now. And so I don't get to play. I don't know what I'm supposed to be. You know, and they had to Just refocus. Crazy. Their offense is averaging 30 points plus the last three games, and they'll get Dallas Goddard back soon. And they're going to get Dallas Goddard back. And, right. and oh, my goodness, it's just impressive the way they're winning. So, at this point, Jalen Hurts is the MVP of the league. Absolutely. The train for Mahomes is so embarrassing when people try to do it because that it's like the – not even LeBron thing, because LeBron got screwed out so many MVPs. It's like the uh, the legacy, like Jordan thing, where you just give a guy something over and over and over again because of, off a of legacy. And yeah, he's great. Right. Yeah, he's good. But he threw three picks and let Russ almost cook him for dinner yesterday. So, and, and if Russ didn't get a con Russ concussion, got that garlic knot on his yeah, head. he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, concussions are funny, but that one was it wasn't funny. funny. But it, the, you know the not walking around, was? and he's still trying to get back in the game. My first thought was that might reset his ass. Right? Oh, like, oh, hey, look, he like too soon. But he was look, cooking though. He was. He was cooking yesterday. They they gave opportunities. He came back. I mean, it was. Oh man. Anyway, By the way, that Mahomes hook shot pass for the touchdown was ridiculous though. I know. Okay. It was just ridiculous though. That one. He. It, I, he I, does at a lot this, of at this point, you're gonna not call it Brett Farvey, and you're gonna call it Mahomian. Correct. And. No, look, he's looking right at him. No, he just definitely not, was. It was just the he, way he he's threw He's looking it. at him, and then he turns, and then he throws it, but he right. knows he's standing there. Yes, for sure. And again, he, uh, anyway, yeah, it's sexy. And it's like, fuck him. Jalen Hurst is MVP. I don't hear nothing about my homie. I don't want to see nothing special about him. Nothing. He almost let Russ cook him. He threw three <laughs> picks yesterday. My guy's only thrown three picks all year. He's got 10 rushing touchdowns, two years back to back. Here's the bad thing. I hate the... Uh, I had sex with a supermodel on Thursday in 1988, and I'm the first person to do that. Stat line stuff where people just why, be bringing up random stuff. I mean, <laughs> saying, I, I enjoyed it at the time, but I hate that people just bring up old stats and try to give me this rah rah system. But my dude, our dude, we are running up stats, new stats. At too. this, yeah, at yeah. this point, he's in in his own category for a lot of things, and there's still five games left. Four, four games left, and so man alive, it, 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 first. 10 rushing touchdowns back to back uh, on the Eagles team. All three uh, running back, wide receiver, court, thousand uh, yards. running back, 1,000 yards. They're going to get a second receiver to 1,000 yards. It's Devontae just, will get there too. It's just really impressive. And again, for those who say about this learning of schedule, you play who you play, you still have to do it. A lot of people lose a lot of games I just against. Wanna, who's playing the hard schedule? Who has a hard schedule? Everyone in the Eagles division has a winning record, so that has to bump the schedule up. 
Yeah. So what? Te- there's not that many good teams anymore. So there are no. Well, hard there, there is a lot of parity this year. Passing yes. is down. Injuries are up. Uh, there have been so many injuries. And if the, the people that have the hardest, you think about the hard schedules. Tua had to go play the Chargers, and the Chargers are actually healthy now. So Tua and, and Dolphins got romped. Yeah. So I mean, you're right. It, it, right. it is all relative. Um, last thing I'll say after after that is again, our guys MVP. The Eagles are the best team in the NFL, the most complete team, really top are. to bottom. Yes, they're in the and easy, they're easiest to say top four of every category. Number Offense, one in defense, num- number one in defense overall. Uh, no, I think they're uh, up num- there. Num- number num- one in sacks, though. Number one in sacks. Number yeah. one in takeaways. Yeah. Number one in point differential. Number. I mean, I, like I said, it's just there's so many things that you can just go down the list and say of what they are. It's so impressive. Now. Going forward, let's just talk about the rest of the league real quick. Who are you scared of in the NFC for going against the Eagles? To, in the playoffs? Yeah. In the play, I'm not scared of Dallas, but I understand why people are with their talent. I just don't trust their coach in the playoffs. San Fran clearly is a good team, but I can't see that quarterback in the playoffs on the road going and getting a win. Getting a win at home versus a very bad Tampa Bay team was impressive. But I don't see him winning. Vikings, maybe. Okay. Number one team for me is the 49ers. That's fair. Mr. Irrelevant. Their uh, defense is so good. That's why they have so many playmakers. His de- their defense is so good, and they don't ask, they don't ask any quarterback to do a lot. Right. <clears throat> so this kid's got too much swagger and too much confidence. He just beat Tom right Brady. No, no. Beating Tom Brady does something to you. Everybody circles on their calendar. Everybody wants to go there and do it. You know, you, you, especially when you're young. When you're young, you don't beat Tom Brady. Right. So for to be Mr. Irrelevant and be in a team where they don't ask you to do anything, the 49ers are the most scary team. But they just screwed themselves over like they always do. They lost Debo, which helps us tremendously. Not for the year, so, though. But he'll be out for a little bit. It, but I'm telling you, it, once people get film on that kid and take away the things he's good at, he's going to have to adjust. And there's a reason he was a seventh-round pick. He doesn't have to adjust to anything. They only asked him to throw the ball eight times. <laughs> what, what are you? Uh, gotta, we got film on him. He he uh, literally he's doing this, and yeah. they're 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 running the the Shanahan sweeps. They're gonna run the ball <laughs> down your throat. He's gonna play action you because they run so much. And the four times, to- what are you gonna take away? His eight passes <laughs> I, again. That I, game I, was an easy eight passes. But I'm telling yeah, you, I hear what I you're everybody saying. Everybody thinks he's the greatest now because he had a good game. I don't think he's the greatest. I think. He's good enough. He is a yes. I think he is a manager of a game, and he's got calm and coolness about him. Right. His his demeanor is the right demeanor for what they need him to do. Now, if they ask him to throw the ball twenty times, oh, he's fucked. Right. But that's the team I'm afraid of because of the team around him, and Sorry. I don't think Debo's coming back, so that helps me a little bit. The Cowboys, you're right. The Cowboys uh, under pressure fold. Their coach is terrible. They their lost their owner is terrible. The today? They. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. See, a week ago. But they ago, T.Y. Hilton. Yes. A minute ago, I was going to tell you, not a minute ago, I was going to say, I think we lose the Cowboys on Christmas Day. That's fine. And I don't even mind doing it. Yeah. Scheduled loss, Glenn Rivers, <laughs> because it, it's it really hard is. to beat a team three times in one season. Mm-hmm. Statistically, you it's just can't third do it. road game in a row. Yes. But now I'm just yeah. like, roll these fucking dudes and get these George W's no matter what, and then kill them in the playoffs too. So the 49ers are who I'm scared of the most. Fair Who are enough. you scared of in the AFC? There's only three teams. Yeah, the Bills are scary, but they're inconsistent right now. The Chiefs are scary, obviously, but also they their defense, and they have no running game or receivers, but they do have Mahomes. And the Bengals are the other team that's looking like they're going to make a run. I'm afraid of one man. Who? And one man only. His penis is the size of St. Missouri. Me? Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe Burrow. The Bengals. Jo- the Bengals. Joe... I- Joe Burrow about to do it. I can see. Joe, Joe Burrow, when the team is healthy, he held his team together when they weren't healthy. Like you're supposed He's to. He's like, yes. Right. Like you're supposed to. And he just has heart. He still gets sacked all the time. He still gets wrecked, and he just stands there and delivers. And now that he's got Chase back, he looks like a superhero. He's just standing there like, mm. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, like, <laughs> I 
Joe Cool. Joe Cool for real. <laughs> he looks at Patrick Mahomes is like, shut the fuck up, kid. He and I'm him. like, yo, he yeah. owns him. <laughs> like when everybody goes in there and they're afraid, and you can see that teams are afraid of like Patrick Mahomes. Like you know, yeah. like I said, the Colts messed around and 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 and, and beat him, and teams beat him. You know what I mean? Because any given Sunday. You when you look at the sideline, like when I look at the sideline of the comp most comparable team out outside of the Bengals, you look at the Chiefs and the Bills are powerhouses, right? Yes. Sorry, Kate. You look at Josh Allen <laughs> on the sideline when he's playing Patrick Mahomes. He looks like somebody stuck something up his butt or he stepped on a nail. He's just, <laughs> oh, oh. He's doing these faces all the time, throwing picks everywhere, and he just doesn't look comfortable. Praise the goodness and all things holy or whatever you want to believe in about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts could be up 90. He could be down two. And he just already has pre-programmed himself to, I'm just going to sit here like this. Sit there and look like nothing's happening. Yep. So unlike when you, like I said, when you see somebody like um, Allen go up against Mahomes, his mannerisms are like, man, how do I beat this guy? What can I do? I've done everything. I mean, they did beat him and I, two years in a row, he, just not in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, just not in the playoffs. Right. But I'm saying even in those games, you see him weathered and upset yeah. and afraid because he's just like, I, I know he's going to score. Now I got to go back up there. Yeah. And again, the pressure makes him make mistakes. And then he really gets down on himself. Joe Burrow does not care right. who he <laughs> plays. He's an like, interception. Uh, whatever. He was in the yeah. Super Bowl. And I, I, he was mad at the end because they lost. But oh, during yeah. the game... He was like, mm, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, that him and Jalen are just like, they got balls of steel, bro. Like they're just focused on the game. They believe in themselves. They believe in their ability. And they know the camera's on them and they know to hold their emotion. Yeah. Tom Brady now looks like a lunatic. All the things you want to <laughs> complain about, don't bring Odell to the team. This guy had to get a note from the NFL to stop smashing tablets on the sidelines. <laughs> And now he just drops them. Now he trash anyway. Yeah, now he just drops them. But, you know, now now he looks like a crazy person yelling at that. Like, bro, you're down 35 to 7. Why are you yelling at the offensive line? It's okay. over. Like, relax. That's a fake yell, too, I think. It's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but again, that's Tom Brady. He's somebody's goat. He ain't my goat. But, uh, yeah, the Bengals. They're scary. Are scary. Yeah, they have weapons everywhere. Oh, too. God. Because they lost for so long, they yes. just got the team <laughs> built up with number one, high number one picks on defense, offense. Uh, it, it's just they're impressive. So they're who I'm afraid of, but I got to get to the Super Bowl to even worry about them. Yep. So the 49ers are, are to be feared. The Vikings, oh, man. I, I know it's a divisional game, but they lost to the Lions, and the Lions are just – they're balling right now. The Lions have been balling for the last two years. Yeah. <laughs> the Lions, nobody, nobody's heart hurts more than Lions fans and Bears fans. Right. Justin Fields is coming out here putting on masterpieces, losing by two. Yeah. Losing by three. It's actually perfect. Losing by four. Currently. Huh? It's good for the Bears. Currently. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was telling, I was talking <laughs> about one of my girls. She's a Bears fan. I'm like, right. yo. She's like, oh, we suck. I'm like, no, like, look at the watch the game. She's like, oh my God, this guy's like, yes. yes. And you're still losing. They made trades to get him some help. Right. And now they're going to use the draft picks to get him more help. And now they know what he needs. I was like, you guys finally got a quarterback. If he can learn to pass a little bit, I mean, they're coming. Like, you can see it. And the Lions are just, they can't, they couldn't stop anybody. Right. Their now the defense is coming together. Better. Yep. But the offense, deuce. I don't know if there's <laughs> anybody better at home right now than the Lions. Than the Lions. Yep. Who's their quarterback? Jared Goff. Jared Goff <laughs> might be the best home quarterback in the league this year. He's thrown 20-something touchdowns at home and, like, three away. <laughs> they should have won that game on Thanksgiving Yeah, at home. But the Bills were there for a week at oh, home. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I I mean, the, the league right now is crazy good, even though it's crazy average, right? It's, it is average. There's a lot of parity. <laughs> um, teams are up and down. But our guy is the MVP, and what I want more than anything else is to change the marketing strategy. I have a friend that works in PR and social media at the Eagles, and they do a great job. Mm -hmm. But what I need is for my owner to do one thing to change everything in the world. What's that? I need for him to let us go in and beat the Cowboys on Christmas. I want him to say into a camera or a microphone, America's team with a question mark. And that's it. <laughs> then I need the Eagles to go into the playoffs 
and beat the Cowboys again. That'd be fun. And I need my owner to find a camera <laughs> and say, you know, the Liberty Bell's right here in Philadelphia. I'm thinking this might be America's team. And I need the fucking whole world to get behind taking America's team away from the Dallas Cowboys and giving it to us just to shut them up. That if the if he if Jeffrey Lurie said that, he would never. But that'd be all. He right. would oh he god. Would it would change the marketing strategy and structure of the world to where like shoot, America's team is now mobile, okay? <laughs> if you Go to the Super Bowl and win. You are America's team. You are the world team. You are the world champion. You're America's team. Just take that branding away from these Fugazi Cowboy fans. You need him to start hanging out with Dion if he's going to start saying something like that. I do. I'm coming. I'm <laughs> coming. Dion, oh, gosh. But, yeah, Jeffrey Lurie, if he did that. Because the real problem is none of these owners speak except for Jerry. Right. That's the and marketing the campaign. Guy, but nobody listens to him anyway. Well, he's insane. Yeah. Sociopath. <laughs> but that's what I need Jeffrey Lurie to do. That's all I need him to do. That'd be amazing. It would be incredible. Yeah, I would love that. All right. Uh, last thing real quick. Let's talk about the... Uh... I got a couple of Eagles things, though. Go ahead, tell me. A couple tell things. Me. One, as the Eagles offense has gone throughout the season, everybody talks about how simple their passing stuff is. But you see now they're starting to evolve and add things, and new wrinkles to it and everything like that. One, my favorite play of the entire game was on the third and one where they looked like they were going to do the quarterback sneak, and they flipped it out to Sanders because everybody loads up now to stop that little play with Hurts. And the play before that, if they hadn't faked that injury, Hurts was going to score. Yeah. That was a touchdown. Yeah. And now they're starting to throw the ball deep. Hurts, who throughout his young career struggles against the blitz. Giants, highest blitzing team in the league, and he torched him. And oh, we had so dude. many drops yesterday. I thought he was getting Devontae killed on that one, by the he, way. Oh, my God. If, that, if the rules were old seven, school, Fourth and seven. Yeah. Why are you going for the pick? Yeah, yeah. Why, why, why did you come in like this? What are you doing? So, first of all, you want to get an interception at the 15 yard line as right. opposed to knocking it down and getting the ball back at the 50. Yeah. You're a moron either way. I think if he hit Smith, though, it's a flag. The way that play would have gone, it would have been a 15 yarder. <sighs> just, it would have looked so bad at Smith. Just, yeah. It would have looked bad. Yeah. He still should have, though. It, he should have just pushed through him. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have been as bad if he pushed through him because he was in the air and he had his hands out. Like, instead of going like this, go like this. Right. It and looked, so. It made no sense. Oh, gosh. And kudos to the coaching staff. Again, they're they're a good coaching staff. Again, I'm not gonna right. totally poo poo the the Giants, but they went over there and and talked to him right. positively. Like, hey. They didn't rip him like, hey, you know, next time you want to do this or that. But he was throwing dimes. Right. He was throwing dimes. And then how about the Eagles? You know, they ran the ball against Green Bay like 80 percent of the time. Threw it against the Titans like 80 percent of the time. Made up on the percentages. I didn't check it. But then we're 50 50 on the run versus the Giants run pass. Yeah. That's winning all three ways, no team in the league can do that like the Eagles can. No team in the league can do that like the Eagles can, especially because Jalen Hurts is the number one pocket passer yep. in the league. He's got the highest QBR. He's got he's got all the ratings, all the touchdowns. His touchdowns coming from the pocket. Like it, it's just he doesn't bail anymore like he used to last year because he believes in his weaponry. It's so impressive because we have weapons. Yep. And so they go up there and they go get the ball. He trusts them. Like you saw glimpses of this last year when he threw a couple of uh, uh, TDs to Smith. Yeah. That one over Asante Samuel Jr. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, man, that was a dime in the end zone. Talking about the Sertain one? Sertain, Patrick yes. Sertain Jr. Sorry. I right. know it was a junior and I know that it was, was one of their best. legacies. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I was close. It was one of the he legacies. Was. We're almost there. But uh, yeah, like you could see that he could do it. Now he just does it like, yo, I'm. it's going to be at the five. In between the hash and the sideline, go and get he puts it. Puts the ball right there. Yeah, the throw to Smith on that touchdown was a dime. Oh, he it just—he should have got killed. He on. threw so many dimes, and they just were dropping them. I'm like, yo, catch these balls, because he—he would have. Anyway, they were on target too. They weren't late. They weren't behind. All of his balls yesterday were pristine. Yes, perfect. it was—it was impressive. To the right shoulder, it, wherever they needed to go, they were there. Yesterday, yesterday, he—he he looked like Aaron Rodgers. Yesterday looked like Aaron Rodgers, like the the even the way he high arcs those bombs. Yeah. Like sometimes you think like, man, that's not, and it drops in perfectly. And I'm like, it got there, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man, alive, it's so exciting. Anything else about the Eagles' offense? Because they can do whatever they want, however you want it, they can give it to you. Yeah, the offensive line after having what a thousand false start penalties last week, they come out and had one holding penalty the entire game, and the Giants have two good outside pass rushers and one. 
guy that's pretty good on the inside. Yeah. So that was a great offensive line game. It the team the team is loaded. Uh Johnson's gonna be okay. That was a big uh, that was big, especially but, when Dallas coming. Yeah, Blankenship uh went down. He's actually been impressive. Yes. He he actually played very well, uh, but he he's uh short term injury. Yeah, they had sprain. Anthony Harrison for a workout who was here last year. Yeah. Play safety for in this defense, yes, I, I was happy to hear that because I was hoping that they didn't do the Jenkins route. But they can't. The Saints still have Jenkins' contract. Oh yeah, retired, and, and so. they're not going to give it to him. They're so, like, hey, give us that first round pick back. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Right. So, oh yeah, that's right. So, but Harris is. I like Harris. Bring He's that okay. Back. Yeah, He's I mean, filling the spot while we need that, it, and that's what we need. Yep. Somebody who knows the system, knows it's everything. Kayvon and, Wallace is. He's not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not. I mean, he's no just offense, not that guy. No offense to him, but shoot, yeah. Blankenship, boy, he came up out of nowhere. Like I said, confidence. He got that first play, got that pick. Yeah. Now he just believes, and you know, sometimes it's all it takes. Um, clap your hands, everybody. The Sixers are so lucky. We haven't even talked about the Phillies. We did last week. We did last week. But I'm saying, like, the Phillies are just yeah. run that credit up. It's Christmas time. <laughs> Spend that money. Worry about the money and the bills later. It's Christmas. Right. Let's do it. The Sixers are lucky that the Eagles are doing what they're doing. Because right, nobody's paying attention right now. I, you know, I, I called and did my thing on the radio, and then people after me called was like, what's the coach supposed to do in nine seconds oh, and on. you're down nine points? I'm like, he's just <laughs> supposed to call a timeout. I was like, if they stood there. And held the ball till the shot clock ran out. They win by two or four, mm-hmm. and did nothing. Right. And it's the Lakers. It's just. It's not even that it's the Lakers though. It's just it happens all the time. As we're talking about the Eagles have fixed mistakes as they go. The Sixers are having the same issues they've had for five years now. But Jason, the team like, hasn't been healthy, and they've got new players. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, That's what I hear every right. year. Guess what? Every year. You add new pieces to the team. That's how it works. And, and it every is, year the same people make mistakes in close games when it's late. It's the same people. And and it is Glenn Rivers. Maybe it's Glenn by default of just bad luck. Yeah. 11 years, he could not get his team to the Western Conference Finals. He leaves. Ty Lu, who everyone thinks is a fluke punk coach, Got a ring because of LeBron, who couldn't handle the pressure <laughs> of coaching LeBron and then coaching without LeBron, and right. had to take sabbaticals. That guy took them to their first Western Conference championship berth without Kawhi Leonard. Well, I mean, you get Kawhi four games a year now. But I'm saying, like, I know that was great. He Glenn could do it with all oh, kinds of superstar talent. This guy comes in the first year, he gets him there, and gets him there. So maybe just by bad luck and attrition alone, having this guy on our team means our stars are going to get injured in the playoffs, right. and they're going to fall apart late in games, and the substitution rotation going to be bad. If he does not stop playing PJ Tucker, <laughs> what about the all bench lineups? <sighs> Still, like. Thought the whole point of having Harden and Embiid was to stagger the minutes and never have to need an all bench lineup. If Embiid's not playing on, if, if Embiid's not on the floor, they're negative like nine thousand. Yeah, I know. And Embiid's also just too soft. Embiid is about to lose his fandom in the city. Yes, I agree. It's happening soon. They threw the ball into him in that Lakers game again. Just as an example, just catch the ball. You're seven two. Right. Jump up and get the ball. He's trying to draw a foul right. and then flops like he does all the time. Right, just and then up, catch the, the other guy gets the ball. Right. You're seven two. You're bigger than Anthony Davis. But he who did isn't score fifty jumping. against Charlotte because <laughs> that's. That's what they do. Right. And, that, and that's the thing, too. They're like, oh, we're going to get back on track. Yeah, because the East is weak, and we run through these punk teams, and we build up wins. And guess what? It doesn't matter. You're not beating the Celtics. You're you're, not beating the Bucks. You're not beating the Bucks. I don't know. Cleveland's going to give them trouble in the playoffs. Cleveland. They're good. Cleveland. They are good. <laughs> Talk about, man, they're like small ball central. Right. I just want to look at the Sixers and see, like, they were like a one seed. Then what were they, a four last year? Right, I think now they're gonna be they'll be like a six this year. Like they're just trending the wrong way, and they did add some like De'Anthony Melton. He's a stud. De'Anthony Melton, as long as he's playing the Lakers. Yeah, <laughs> PJ Tucker, dud, absolute dud. I don't even. And know again, what, three years. Our coach. Three years. Our co- besides Montrez Harrell, Maury messing up on that. Harrell sucks. Uh, <laughs> 
you won't you won't play Matisse, even though Matisse has got his game better because he's in the doghouse yeah. and you don't like young players. He wouldn't play Tyrese Maxey if Tyrese didn't force his way Correct. into having to be in the line because he doesn't play young players. Tyrese Maxey is three times better than PJ Tucker. And all the things that you want to jerk exactly. off and tell me about PJ Tucker, that's all valid in the playoffs. Right. In the playoffs, <laughs> he has value. On these regular season games, when he goes nine games with zero points, you, and people want to talk shit on Ben Simmons because he deed up somebody. Yeah. <laughs> He's Ben Simmons without the assists. Older, slower. <laughs> and he won't shoot. Right. So I'm like, what if you don't get Thibel in there who's actually been working on this game? He's been hitting corner threes. He is three and D now. The whole point is you're supposed to be developing those young guys that can help you when the playoffs come around. That's what the Spurs used to always do under Popovich when they were good. They'd have those games where all the young guys would play, and you'd be like, what the hell's happening here? But then in the playoffs, those guys are game tested and battle ready. Yeah. So the Sixers suck. They're not They're going anywhere. As hell. Second round exit, if S not a first. Yes. And it's going to be so Oh, what do we do? Unless they fire Rivers, like how Girardi got fired, and then Cassell takes over and then takes them on a run like the Phillies have with Rob Thompson. I, I, w I wish Cassell was a coach because I feel like Cassell is a no-nonsense person. Yeah. Who is taking a back seat because obviously he's an assistant. Right. Yeah. But to. but if he was in the if he was in the lead role, if he was the head coach, it would almost be like the Panthers situation. Yeah. They fire their coach. And they've gotten better. Yeah. And the guy who replaces them is no nonsense, mm -hmm. no joke. They kicked the wide receiver off the team for yelling at him. Like he's just no nonsense. Like, yo, we're here to work. We're gonna get the job done, implement simple things, right. and get it done. So uh, I just I'm so happy about everything in the city besides the Sixers and the Flyers who are yeah, dead. The winter to me. sports teams are just the Flyers dead. are dead to me. Well, yeah, they're in a they need to rebuild and they, they don't want to. They need they need to sell the team. Yeah, they actually Jay Z, do. come buy the team. I know <laughs> you want football and I know hockey is like a white thing, but just buy the team. You want to buy a team hockey? Like, <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, don't I never don't, noticed. Don't question me. I was like, is there some new black people in there? I don't know about it. I think there's like six of them in the whole league. So that's being generous. But man, <laughs> the Flyers break my heart and the Sixers just make me sick. It's the same thing. Like you said, they're trending the wrong way. It's embarrassing. And so many people in this city are still like, oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up. Uh, I'm. You can find Jason on the Twitters and he's killing it on the Facebooks. He's posting. The At least somebody's seeing the stuff Facebook posted. tells me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People looking. People are signing up. People are joining. That's all because of Jason. Uh, I'm BlackReady.com. Who's going to turn his phone off? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can find us on the internet. And, uh, man, it's just. We'll be on Twitter until it goes away. Yeah. Twitter's, Twitter's <laughs> all right. We're here. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah. All right. We're out. All right, bye.